Uh, let's talk about uh, schools, uh, because that's what the man who wants to be Prime Minister next year, Keir Starmer, is going to be talking about today. He's giving a speech today where he's going to talk about how he wants to shatter the class ceiling. Uh, he says that speaking fluently and clearly will be put at the heart of the national curriculum and given the same status as literacy and numeracy under a Labour government. That's what Sir Keir Starmer is going to say uh, in his speech. He's written an article for the Times as well saying that the almost exclusive focus on reading and writing at present is short-sighted. He wants oracy, I didn't even know that was a word, oracy to be given priority at every level of a child's education. Well, let's talk about this with Chris McGovern. He's chair of the Campaign for Real Education, he joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning, well, Julia. As a former Ofsted inspector, former head teacher as well, and running the, 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 your campaign, um, he's right, isn't he? You know, it's amazing because we're, we're thought of, of as being traditional at our campaign, but uh, Keir Starmer's taken us back two and a half thousand years to Aristotle. <laughs> <laughs> speaking's important and of course he's right oracy speaking rhetoric is all important so we'd welcome that but uh he's got a lot of other things to put right as well and i have to say that in terms of uh, oral literacy you have to look to parents and unfortunately many parents have been badly educated themselves and so yeah. there is a problem there but it's right to identify it? yeah absolutely and it's interesting it's, this morning we've also got a speech from amanda spielman the chief uh, inspector of schools uh i've said and and she's going to be saying um something quite interesting saying that basically we're in the situation where uh, when you see schools as a solution to everything effectively social workers now you know schools feeding children teach them how to use the loo teach them these really basic life skills um she says that puts education at risk because schools are no longer just teaching the three r's they're teaching everything else as well because parents it seems aren't doing their job anymore yeah, and that's been going on for a few decades, actually. Yeah. She's right to highlight this, but she's late in highlighting it. It's pretty obvious that, you know, a lot of teachers are put off the profession that they either don't enter it or they or, or they leave it because they're not allowed so much to teach their subject, history, geography, maths, as to promote to do social work, really. They, they yeah. become social workers, psychiatrists. And also, don't forget, there's quite a lot of the profession that supports this ideology of wokeness and, and schools these days are promoting and brainwashing the generation of children. They They've really been are. very successful. They've been very successful. If you look around you, children identifying as cats and moons and so forth, you can see that's a big success for the education mm -hmm. system in the eyes of the educational blob, the establishment. Yeah. That's great. They think and, and, yeah, more and, and, and more time more time, you know, painting rainbow flags and doing marches and things, as opposed to, hey, why don't you teach my child? what a rainbow is teach me the science behind how a rainbow even can be seen you know that that would be worthwhile but this is the thing i said i've got a very good friend who's the head of an inner city school he says you know he is a glorified social worker and you know riot police to all intents and purposes and dealing with so many social ills and we've had so many head teachers and teachers saying you know we've got kids turning up at school i mean it's been exacerbated during the pandemic and lockdowns but it was already happening beforehand uh, they're turning up you know you know four and a half five years old in reception they they they're not toilet trained. They don't know how to hold a knife and fork. They can barely speak. We've got parents who, God, I walk along and I see the number of parents who are pushing a buggy with a kid who's perfectly awake and they're, they've are they got their headphones in and it breaks my soul to see. You can be chatting to your kid about everything. Let's let's look for a yellow car. You Let's look for a red car. Let's, you know, the games that you play, you know, walking to school. I mean, God, I used to be exhausted by nine o'clock. The, the, little, the little games we'd play, the number plates and things with my daughter on the way to school. And it's all about teaching a child to interact. You know, children, so many children are basically, they're basically being brought up by, by technology now. And that is a really big issue because when they get into the classroom, they can't read emotional signals. They can't, they don't, they've never been told what to do in a coherent way by, a, by a, a, an adult. They don't, they don't know you have to do what the teacher says. This is such basic stuff that your generation, my generation were taught. And we've got a whole, we've got millions of children who this is never, this is a whole new thing to them. Yeah, I mean, gosh, you're saying very traditional, almost. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh mate, I'm a 1950s parent. I mean, I'm a yes sir, no sir, three bags full. You do when you kids have come to my house for many years, and they are told very unknown certain terms. When you come to my house, an adult tells you to do something, you do it first time every time, and you do it with a smile or go home. The good news is that Keir Starmer, I think, is going to be joining the campaign for real education. He's taken some of our ideas, and yes, you're absolutely right. Parents' role is is crucial. We mustn't underestimate that. And we've got to actually look at educating parents as well. I yeah. work with uh, children from deprived backgrounds, and often the parents are very ashamed to say so, but they can't read and write themselves. They can't even help their child. They've been through our education system. So to be honest, adult literacy is also very, very important. But I welcome what Keir Starmer is saying about moving more to, to perhaps a more traditional education system and also 
you know, vocational skills are incredibly important. He talks about separating children between sheep and goats, the academic and the non-academic. Actually, there's nothing to be said derogatory about a no. uh, child who's a plumber or an electrician or a hairdresser. Hey, they're earning a lot those, more those money skills. than a lot of people who've been to uni, I'll tell you that. <laughs> they, 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 you earn a lot more money as a plumber than you do as a historian like me, believe me. So there's some good things in Keir Starmer. I just wish, you know, we could have done this 40, 50 years ago. And you know, if, if you want to see a monument to our education system uh, over the last 50 years, look around you. That's uh, where we are. Absolutely. We're in a system now where children identify as cats and moons and so forth. We've got to start again. We need a Royal Commission on Education. We need to look at it very oh, fundamentally. We, I disagree. We, we don't need a Royal Commission. We just need sensible parents to get back in charge. Chris McGovern, always good to talk to you. I'll have him in charge tomorrow. Um, I, Benedict, I know you want to come in, but I want to quickly bring in Mark in Carlisle. He's called in on 03444991000 uh, to answer my question. Like, what would you teach children to help them succeed? Mark, good morning to you. What would you teach kids to succeed in school? Well, basically, uh, people in the know like me knows that the, the non-fee-paying schools don't teach you all the financial ways and, and mm. how to do your finances because they're getting you ready to be an employee. There's nothing wrong the with that. Schools, the private We're all, most schools, of us are employees. The private schools are getting you ready to be an employer. So they give you <laughs> all the information you could possibly want, including financial skills, etc. Everybody knows this. this is no, I think, no, I think it's that today. teachers don't have you the like skills. You like when you have a cup of coffee. If you like this without a cup of coffee, unbelievable. No, I, I, I disagree. I think everyone should have these skills. But you're right, some schools do it much better than others. Thank you so much for calling. Mark. I'm sorry to keep it brief. I want to give Benedict, you've got about 20 seconds, well, my does, lovely. Does that mean that I failed? Because because I don't employ anybody when yeah. <laughs> I went to that campus. Exactly. I know, I'm thinking, I, I I'm no, not people who went to private school, they should not be employing people. Yeah. <laughs> I need to find a balance. But it is quickly. true, isn't it? But people say, oh, you're just teaching kids just to be employees. Yeah, because most of us are. You need to know that you have to do what you're told sometimes. Get over it. Yeah, I think that's fair. And not everybody can be, you know, an entrepreneur or anything yeah. else. People Otherwise, need to we would all be. Yes. I mean, every, everybody needs to pay the bills. They need to get the jobs, but they need to be able to function. Yeah, absolutely. Uh,